This man, who many idolized for being a millionaire and a supposed business genius, was actually a criminal. In order to make a lot of money quickly, he became a stockbroker on Wall Street, said goodbye to his wife, and got out of the truck. It is his first day of training. From the very beginning, he is amazed by the world of the stock market. Mark is Jordan Belfort's mentor, but he is an unscrupulous and shameless person who teaches the young man very bad things. Belfort is very excited because he will be able to help clients improve their finances, but Mark tells him that clients don't matter and that they have to manipulate them into spending more money since they earn commissions. This man is a little bit off due to the abuse of certain substances, especially a white powder that is used a lot in these environments. And well, you know what they say, he who goes with the wolves teaches the wolves. In the end, he spends his training time and manages to start working as a broker, but just on his first official day, a worldwide disgrace happens. The office is in chaos, everyone is shouting and trying to sell shares, but things are not going well at all. Then an alarm goes off and everyone stops. Because of the famous Black Monday, a financial crisis, the company where he worked closes down, but then how did he become a millionaire? Well, now that he is unemployed, he looks for a job at the newspaper with the help of his wife. They seem to love each other very much and are good people, but Jordan is going to end up breaking his heart. His wife is worried, but he tells her to calm down because no matter what happens, someday he will become rich. And boy, did he make it, but he did a lot of damage. In the newspaper, he finds another job as a stockbroker, so he decides to go in person to ask about the job. From the outset, it looks like a much simpler office than the one he worked in before. He opens the door, and inside he notices that it is a very austere place. He introduces himself to Duane, explains to him that they sell shares in the over-the-counter market, that is, cheaper shares but with a huge profit margin and without being so regulated by the law. Jordan's eyes sparkle and he gets to work. These shares are practically junk. It's very difficult for their value to grow and that's why nobody buys them. But Jordan Belfort is an excellent businessman. He starts selling junk stocks to a potential client only telling half-truths. He does it so well that everyone in the office starts listening to him and pays full attention to what he is saying. Until after only a few minutes, he closes the sale, cuts the check and gets up. Just like that, he just made $2,000. He was a very good salesman, but what he was selling was junk bonds. He was the only one who benefited, but not his clients. He spent his money on a fancy car that attracted the attention of many people, including this man whose life he was going to change. While Jordan was eating breakfast, Donnie came over to introduce himself. Donnie didn't know it, but Belfort was going to lead him down a very bad path. He tells him that they make furniture for children and then asks him a very personal question. How much do you make? Belfort calmly tells him. About $70,000 a month. At first he thinks he's joking. However, Jordan pulls the check out of his briefcase to prove it's true. Seeing this, Donnie marks his job and resigns to start working with Belfort as a stockbroker. Over time, they become closer friends as they share the same ambition, but Donnie was another very bad influence on Jordan. In order to make more money, they become independent, rent a place to set up their own offices and hire more people. None of Belfort's employees were stockbrokers, but they all had sales experience. He starts explaining to them how the business and the world of stock sales works. He doesn't care if they are very smart or not. He cares if they are ambitious and know how to sell. Belfort was selling junk bonds to people without a lot of money or knowledge in finance because no one educated was going to buy these bonds. But he had a great and brilliant idea. To make even more money, he rebranded the company to Stratton Oakmont and gave scripts to his employees training them again but now to sell stocks to rich people but with a lot of deception. They all lied that they were the very vice president of the company and so that they would not be suspicious, he would first sell them shares of important companies and then he would put the junk shares in the same package with the commission. Only because they were rich people, they were buying tens of thousands of dollars. They were practically being cheated and I knew it perfectly well. This company grew exorbitantly fast. More and more employees, more and more calls, more and more money. They were all selling and billing millions. The problem is that the FBI noticed something was fishy, so they started investigating. Little by little, they realized what kind of fraud fraudulent business he was doing. However, no one had any way of checking it out. Even a journalist went to take pictures of him to publish an article in the newspaper. A news article bad-mouthing him in order to damage him. However, far from affecting him, this only brought him more publicity. Everyone wanted to work with him and ask his advice. The offices grew even more and were out of control. Metaphorically, there are animals because the place is like a zoo, full of people looking for money, the superficial, and to satisfy their most primitive desires without considering other people at all at their expense. Hence the lust and illegal substances. Belfort even started cheating on his wife. Now everyone who started working with him looks different, in expensive offices, with expensive suits and very luxurious watches. What many people nowadays consider as success. But I'm not so sure. I like to use the term plastic success and now I'll explain why. There were private company parties on the beach which cost millions of dollars, but above all Jordan was using more and more substances and I think you know that this never ends well. In one of those work meetings he saw in the distance a woman named Naomi and it was love at first sight. Or more than love, I would say it was simple desire. 
Let's remember that he has a wife, but that didn't matter to him. He went over to talk to her and flirted even though the woman was accompanied by her boyfriend, who immediately noticed Jordan's intentions. Belfort is a person who likes a challenge, so he decided to invite her to dinner. That night she also flirted with him even though she knew he was married. Belfort took her to his apartment, Naomi invited him in, and he agreed. Upstairs, what you might imagine happened. Jordan continued to cheat on his wife for a while until his wife found out the hard way. Belfort was riding with his mistress in a limo and buttocks his substances, but his wife was waiting for him at the entrance of the hotel. Seeing them arrive, he realized what was happening. She indignantly started yelling at him. It was not anger, it was disappointment. Disappointment that her husband is no longer the man she married, no longer the man she once loved. His world has completely changed and as a result so has he. Jordan can't say anything. After that you can only see in her husband's face a deep sadness. But well the truth is that Belfort didn't care much. They divorced and within three days Naomi moved in with him in his luxurious apartment and a few months later Belfort proposed to her with a big, big ring to which Naomi accepted. Obviously there was no shortage of eccentric and over-the-top bachelor party, where of course we see him cheat on his fiancé. After that they had a nice huge wedding in the Bahamas, where Naomi introduced him to Aunt Emma who lived in Europe but came to luxurious event. And as a wedding gift, Belfort gave his wife a yacht and bought himself a mansion. He seemed to be on top of the world, although it was only on the outside as it was only a matter of time before everything exploded. And in reality the relationship with his wife was superficial, causing fights every day. And as icing on the cake they had a daughter. This is when the FBI begins to pursue him in earnest as Jordan decided to manipulate the stock market for the IPO of the Steve Maiden company. In fact, the owner of the shoe brand himself was also involved in the scam. This practice is known as pump and dump, which is basically manipulating prices artificially and when all the stocks go up, you sell them and keep the profits. That day, Jordan Belfort motivated his team like never before. Everyone looked up to him. They were eager, aggressive, and thirsty for more money. It can almost be compared to a cult only here the cult is about money. This illegal method made them millions of dollars in a few hours the day the Steve Maiden company went public. But let's remember that this is a stock fraud. None of this was legal, but they made more money than they could spend. Success in its modern definition, but this is just plastic success. And let's remember that he has the FBI on his heels. The investigations were getting more and more intense and this reached its limit when two agents went to visit him on his private yacht. He is a brilliant person and a planner, so I was expecting them. At first he is very polite and formal, but quickly the truth comes out. Belfort tries to bribe them in a discreet way, offering them millions of dollars and telling them that they were going to be able to help their families, manipulating them with very personal issues that hurt us all, but they wouldn't let him, they were determined to put him in prison. When they leave the yacht, Belfort insults and yells at them, brags about all the money he has and tells them they are starving. He thinks he is superior simply because he has money, which he has achieved in very unethical ways. Jordan was so close to being caught that he got scared, so he decides to protect his money in tax havens, that is, banks in Switzerland. Not without first taking their respective medicines. Belfort had created a dependency on these drugs. He was taking them all day long until they boarded the plane. But this, instead of relaxing him, made him even more upset. We can see his need for more reflected in the withdrawal he feels when he wakes up. The point is that they manage to get to Switzerland and meet with the banker. They talk about banking confidentiality rules. Belfort wants to make sure he won't be ratted out to the FBI. The banker tells him that they would only help the FBI if the crime is also prosecuted in Switzerland. But if he got a front man, there would be no problem. The loan shark needed to have a European passport, so he turns to Aunt Emma. He talks to her for a while and manages to convince her. With the help of Brady's wife and her family, who by the way were Swiss, they managed to pass millions of dollars in cash with their respective commission to the bankers who were supporting them. But things started to get complicated. Donnie became a jerk and has constant problems with Brad. These same problems caused them to have a fight in the street and they are spotted by cops. Brad tries to run but is arrested. And on the other hand, Jordan continues to ingest more barbiturates. These are prescription drugs for anxiety and other disorders. They literally turn your brain off, but his addiction causes him to do something stupid. Stupid. To celebrate that some of his money is now safe, Donnie gets some powerful pills. The friends get ready and everyone takes a pill. Time passes, but it has no effect. So they decide to take another and then one more. It's not that they didn't work, they just took longer to work, but this pair didn't know that. His wife comes downstairs to tell Jordan that his lawyer is calling him about something urgent. He tells her to run out of the house to a payphone. Jordan gets in the car and drives off. When his lawyer arrives, he tells him to be very careful because all the phones in the house are tapped by the FBI and at that the pills start to kick in. Jordan can't speak properly and falls to the floor. He's practically getting cerebral palsy. As best he can, he crawls to his car and when he tries to get in, his wife dials him on the phone. She tells him that Donnie has gone crazy and is talking to the Swiss banker. The FBI is going to listen to them. So as best he can, he gets in the car and drives home. 
Of course, he drives terribly badly as almost all of his brain is numb from the drugs and he causes a disaster, endangering his life and the lives of others. He enters his house and makes his way as far as he can until he reaches the kitchen. The poor daughter is watching everything. She struggles with him over the phone until he finally takes it away from her. Donnie, who is the same or worse than Belfort, grabs a piece of food and starts to swallow. He falls to the floor, unable to breathe. But Jordan gathers the strength to get up and after a few maneuvers manages to save his life. The film portrays it in a very comical way, but deep down it's all very, very bad. Little by little he is destroying himself. His lawyers recommend him to resign from his beloved company in order not to end up in prison. At first he refuses, but his lawyer tells him, you already have all the money in the world, or do you need someone else's? So Belfort decides to go to the office and announce his resignation. He goes in to give the announcement to all his employees, he's saying goodbye and he thanks everyone, they all applaud him and recognize him as someone important. This makes him get upset and he forgets everything he had thought about and decides to continue working. He himself says to fuck the FBI. It's no longer a need for more money, now it's a hunger for influence and power. Uh, he is ecstatic to feel that his employees adore and idolize him. The FBI agent gets wind of this and goes after him. They are going to corner him. They start getting subpoenas, which they ignore. Everything starts to fall apart when they go to work from Italy to feel safer, and they find out that Steve Maiden was betraying them. But even worse, his wife arrives in tears. She tells him the terrible news that Aunt Emma died. That is, the woman who had millions of Belfort's dollars to her name. Jordan is in shock. What happened to Aunt Emma matters little or nothing to him. What matters to her is her money. He dials his lawyer and tells him that the money was left in his name, but he has to go to Switzerland tomorrow. She tells the captain to take it. The captain warns them that the weather is very bad and they could endanger their lives. However, Belfort doesn't care and decides to go, putting money first and then his own health. On the way, there are many problems because the weather is lousy. Things go so wrong that the ship sinks and they have to be rescued. This near-death experience changes him for the better. He starts doing sales courses and motivational talks. However, the joke is short-lived as he is caught by the FBI. Now they have managed to get evidence against him and they can give him up to 20 years in prison unless he cooperates. That is to say that he gives up the others involved. Jordan decides to save himself and turns them in. The FBI arrives at the office and the men he ratted out are arrested. Thanks to this confession, he served only three years in prison, obviously in a luxurious jail that looked more like a hotel. After this, he published books telling his story and became a celebrity. Now he gives lectures and sales courses, is invited to different TV shows, and has been interviewed countless times about his eccentricities. But his image has been exalted, especially by young people who believe that this is the ideal to reach. Many people today think that this is what success looks like, but after seeing this story, do you consider Wolf of Wall Street a successful person? Yes, he made a lot of money, but it doesn't take away from the fact that he swindled people, sold out his friends, cheated on his partner, beat his wife, put his daughter at risk, was a poly drug addict, and yet his figure was exalted. Obviously, this person has things to admire, such as his salesmanship, his leadership, and his oratory skills. But all of this was used for bad. He led others to be swindled and sold junk stocks, promising things that were never going to happen and taking money from people who trusted him. He did not mind enriching himself at the expense of harming others. As part of his sentence, he was ordered to pay back dollars of dollars he had stolen from investors. However, he still has an enormous amount to pay and may never finish. This movie was directed by Martin Scorsese and was written based on Jordan Belfort's autobiographical book. Obviously, some things were added and subtracted to make it a more entertaining film, but in essence, it is still a biopic of sorts. However, no one can prove that everything written in this book is 100% true or not. But what does matter is to rethink our ideals of success and understand that money is not everything. If you want me to relate and reflect on your favorite story or answer questions or comments, you can become a member of the channel by clicking below where it says join. This will give you access to many exclusive benefits, plus you will be supporting the channel immensely.